222 day, I want to talk about SHX, XLM, and XRP concentrating on Codeus and Lair. I have always thought it is a bit strange how Stronghold talks about DeFi. However, I have had a lot of help to explain how Stronghold helped create Lair, which is even hinted at by the Flare CEO himself. Codeus is not dead. In fact, it had activity as recently as September of 2024. And it is interesting because it kind of appears as if Ripple has some regret about not pursuing smart contracts and Codeus harder. Though Vitalik had some great ideas of, of, about smart contracts on layer one. And at one point he stayed on Stefan's couch, our CTO at the time. And he shared his ideas, and we were obviously very, very impressed that, you know, he had, he had a clear vision, uh, not that far ahead of its time, as it turned out. And, um, and he actually, Stefan, Thomas, myself, um, Arthur Brito at times, and, and Vitalik talked about, like, bringing Layer 1 smart contracts to, to our design. And interestingly enough, there were a variety of reasons why we didn't, we didn't like, let, grab onto that idea back then. I guess uh, you could argue we're a little late to the party talking about that now. Um, but I think, you know, it would have been, it, it's an interesting counterfactual to imagine if, if Vitalik had persuaded Stefan and Arthur and I to build smart contracts into layer one on the XRP ledger in the early days. But I think what we were concerned with is that it would, and you can see this with Ethereum, that it causes the transaction fees to go up and it reduces the transactions per second and it does have costs. And obviously you can argue about, you know, obviously it has benefits as well. Tammy has talked about how Stronghold is intended to be Swift 2.0. This is different than PayPal. So PayPal is um, an application that a service that sits on top of the existing payment system, you know, ACH and Swift and Federal and Fedwire, right? We're building a Swift 2.0, right? All of the information here ties into a speculation of mine that Ripple, Stellar, and Stronghold are all part of a tangentially coordinated plan to take over payment infrastructure, where SHX is intended as a bridge platform in between Stellar and the XRPL, specifically the ILP. I want to explain the technical connections that point towards Stronghold helping to create player and how that ties into the XRPL and into Stellar. Here on the Stronghold site, it explains how to create your Stronghold payment pointer. And in here, it is talking about Coil, who were the people behind Codius and who were connected to Ripple. If you go onto codius.org, it refers to Monied, which in turn refers to the ILP and Stronghold, which is here on the screen. And if you scroll down, it calls out Stronghold here. It's also interesting because it points you towards GitHub, which I will get into here in a little bit. As far as Codius goes, Codius is a smart contract platform that ties into the, the ILP, and it explains how all Codius contracts have money built in. Here it explains how to use money to connect to the ILP testnet. Coming back to GitHub, they are a wallet provider on the XRPL called out here. They are also working with Flare and the XRPL. The Codius website calls it out as being in beta still, and it was always about how their smart contract architecture enables them to interact with any service or API, which is all about interoperability, which ties right into what Stronghold has been doing. They created Stronghold Net with the ability to interact with APIs. I was also poking around Codius and the ILP. In here, it talks about how Codius, the ILP, and Flare have advantages in the payments space because of the automation and security of these smart contracts. 
if and when Codius would not be able to directly interoperate with a d d DLT, Polaire can come in to allow Codius to Polaire network to execute smart contracts through wrapped assets collateralized by the Polaire token. This enables Codius to use Flare Network as a bridge to interact with a DLT network that does not support smart contracts. And there are a few interesting ties into how Codius can into central bank institutional end of things. 2024 Bank of Russia documentation has referred to Codius as a smart contract platform for automatic transactions in between counterparties in different countries. There are also applications of it being implemented in the derivatives market, which is worth hundreds of trillions of dollars. So like the Codius platform would allow you to write a program and it'll make it easy for people to verify the program works that would say, if these five things happen, then this person gets paid. If these other three things happen, this other person gets paid. So we could just, for example, you know, you could think about uh, some sort of complex financial derivative. We could take an, an, as an input the Bloomberg feed of stock prices, and we could make very complex bets about, well, if this stock goes up and this stock goes down and this other thing happens and the National Weather Service says it's sunny today, then this person gets paid. And if these other things happen, someone else gets paid. So that's going to really reduce the barriers to entry for creating uh, financial derivative products, and it's going to allow more people to hedge more complicated situations where there's not enough people right now to make the market worthwhile to create the asset and have it verified. If Stronghold has been designed as the interoperability platform in between the XRPL, ILP, Hilaire, and Stellar, it is of utmost importance to understand how Stronghold USD is an anchor on Stellar. Anchors connect the Stellar network to traditional banking infrastructure so that all currencies can interoperate on a single platform. Most basic level of anchors a bridge. Um, they have uh, value on two, uh, two, two different networks. Um, so either uh, one, uh, a wallet on Stellar, and then access to a payment network, and they, they facilitate transactions across those networks. Um, you and I all probably have access to a bank account or cash in your wallet, and maybe a Stellar, a Stellar account as well. Doesn't make you an anchor. What makes you an anchor is offering that to, as a service to others. So um, being willing to accept a payment on one network and make a payment on another, say taking a bank transfer and then willing to transfer a cash or a cash equivalent on Stellar makes you an anchor offering that as a service to others. The Stronghold USD white paper also calls out how it is in fact an anchor.